The These Obama people are psychopaths. The Obama administration is Dr. Frankenstein. ISIS is the creation of Frankenstein. They created the monster, and now they're going, mm -hmm. whoa, I don't know what to do anymore. It's gotten out of control. And that's what's happening right now, that entire analogy right there. Absolutely. Let's go back to the debate. Business, industry, academia behind a national goal to put a man on the moon and bring him back safely. I said, you can do the same kind of thing. Declare that within five to ten years we will become petroleum independent. The moderate Arab states would have been so concerned about that, they would have turned over Osama bin Laden and anybody else you wanted on a silver platter within two weeks. There are smart ways to do things, and there are muscular ways to do things, and sometimes you have to look at uh, both of those to come up with Jake. the right solution. Jake. Let me let me make a comment there. We're never going to achieve energy independence here in the United States as a matter of foreign policy because it has been a matter of foreign policy since we went off the gold standard to have a petrodollar. Saudi Arabia is a protected species from the United States. No matter how many people they behead, they behead more people than ISIS. They're brutal. They're intolerant. It's a brutal regime. It's a corrupt regime. But we support them because they support our fiat currency, the petrodollar. That and peak oil has been sold by the CIA since that was a creation of Henry Kissinger and Richard Nixon back in the 1970s. So that's a pipe dream to think that we're going to somehow have American energy independence. We need to get independence from the grid. And that's what we were talking about earlier, how they crack down on people who try to get off the grid. Let's go back. With having a I just, Chris Christie's always talking about 9-11 and I saw the planes and all my <laughs> people, the head turned to the sky and if needed to, I would go to war and that's what Bush did. No, Bush said, I don't care about Osama bin Laden, we need to go to Iraq. They, yeah. they weren't the ones who bombed the, the They didn't even follow their own conspiracy theory. <laughs> right. They came up with a conspiracy theory that was a pile of lies as big as a rubble at 9-11 and they didn't even follow that. They immediately went off on another tangent and the American people let them get away with it. Right. How many times are we going to let them get away with it? They stole the pa all the patriotism everyone was feeling, and they're like, okay, well, the president says this is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. By intellect, they cannot. They, they require that what they need is they need an operating space. That's what Afghanistan was for Al Qaeda. It was a vacuum that they filled, and they created an operating space. Here we go, back space. to the vacuum That's again. It's that giant sucking sound, uh, Joe. Destroyed. It is the reason why <laughs> yeah. ISIS has now grown as well. We allowed them, we allowed it's a vacuum the time to emerge in Syria. tested they play an right out of the playbook. To and today they're not just in Iraq and Syria anymore. They're now in Libya conducting operations in the Sinai. They're now in Afghanistan trying to supplant the Taliban as the most powerful uh, radical jihadist group on the ground there as well. You cannot allow radical jihadists to have an operating safe Thank haven you, anywhere in the world. Okay. Governor Huckabee. Yeah, we're just today, helping them grow their opium so they can today, become a, <laughs> such a large power there in the region. Different intelligence analysts have said that what they sent up the ladder was doctored by senior officials so that they could give some happy talk to the situation that we face. I love the idea of a, of a good intellectual capacity to deal with our enemies, but the fact is if you don't have good intelligence that's reliable and it's honest, you're not going to have good intelligence and you cannot make good decisions. The next president is primarily elected not just to know things, but to know what to do with the things that he knows. And the most dangerous person in any room is the person who doesn't know what he doesn't know. Thank you, And Governor. the reason Barack Obama... There are knowns and unknowns. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't know what he doesn't yeah. know. You're a dangerous person. <laughs> big, have all dangerous on the, uh, he, he's on not going to... He's going to criticize Obama for having false intelligence, but he won't criticize uh, the, the uh, Bush administration for lying to people. Knowing they had false intelligence. Right now, we've been talking about ISIS here and there about this in this discussion. There's a big debate right now about whether or not to send more U.S. troops to fight ISIS in Iraq and Syria. In the first debate earlier, earlier this evening, Senator Lindsey Graham <clears throat> argued that candidates are only serious <laughs> about fighting ISIS if they are willing to send 10,000 U.S. troops to Iraq. Not 10, about stopping and funding them or airdropping them grenades. No, we had to send guys <laughs> to fight against the weapons that we gave. Yeah, Lindsey Graham, let's get serious. <laughs> are enough as long as the rules of engagement are changed. What do you know that Senator Graham doesn't know? No, to be clear, what I said the other day was that we need to lift the political restrictions that are already in play. Barack Obama's administration has put political restrictions on the military personnel already in Iraq. We need to lift those and then we need to listen to our military experts not the political forces in the White House, but See, our military. None of these guys about how many more we send in. are in interested in the least in way of de-escalating. The uh, they're not interested in admitting that we didn't just make a mistake. We actually created this situation deliberately. 
they won't admit any of that. They will. They will. They won't even dance around it, even when they talk about false intelligence reports briefly with the Obama administration. They won't admit how they have been dishonest with the American people and continue to be dishonest yeah, with the American people. they can't admit that they've done anything wrong. Yeah. We've got hey guys, I, got, I just got yeah. a, an update from the owner of Head Down Rifles. This is a pretty cool uh, uh, thing he's going to do. Lee Queen just says, any sales through Head Down products from this announcement now, from this time forward, 5% of those sales will be donated towards the satellite launch to reach 400 million people. So anybody out That's there, great. if you go to Head Down uh, Products, Head Down Rifles, HD and you purchase firearms. something from them, yeah, hdfirearms.com, if you go there and you purchase something, 5% of that will be given back to us here at InfoWars to help reach our goal, to reach that 400 million. So everyone out there, thank you once again for watching, and thanks to Head Down Rifles yes, for you. being here to support us. That's thank amazingly support. clean. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Head Down. You know, so those guys make great products. I know Big Sads, a few of their firearms. I have one of their holsters, uh, Georgia Optics, all those guys down there. Again, go to, great products. Go to, what is the website again? HDFirearms.com. Go there and 5% will be donated uh, for this money bomb. 5% will be donated to our money bomb. And again, that's for the next 28 hours. If you want to make a direct donation to us, you can do that at 888-253-3139. And once again, this is a one-of-a-kind Head down rifle, Triton 10 AR-15. There's not going to be another one like this whatsoever. It's got the custom job on it. It's got Alex Jones' signature and mine as well. Uh, like I said before, this is a very sturdy weapon. It's a great. It's American-made, and the people who made this are veterans. So their hearts and minds, and I mean, they pour everything into this product. So your help is going to help support the info war, the Second Amendment, and head down rifles. Thank you, guys. Yes, thank you. Rand Paul is speaking out about a... Yes, let's listen to what Maybe Rand Paul is saying. Now I want to bring in my colleague, Dan Abbas. We just missed that. I'll recap that for those of you who didn't hear it. What he was saying was we're watching this on the closed captioning. He was saying that he was very disappointed that Saudi Arabia would not accept any of these refugees out of this war. Of course, we know that. Of course, what nobody is talking about is the, the horrendous war that Saudi Arabia is conducting on its southern neighbor, Yemen. We had a picture on our website of a weapon there that was deliberately set up to target civilians. It looked like an exploded lightsaber. Uh, but that's the Saudi Arabia that we know, the Saudi Arabia that beheads more people than ISIS that is intricately involved with the CIA and our dark side of our government. They get a free pass because of the petrodollar. That's why they're doing this. And in Western civilization, we need to make it clear that our faith in the Jewish and Christian principles force us to live a life bigger than ourselves, to Thank be you, sinners in justice. I would also add so that, that what Rand Paul was saying was that uh, we needed to not have boots on the ground in this conflict. He said we could support the Kurds with air support. I would like to see a more non-interventionist foreign policy. I think what we need to do is we need to stop the war, stop starting wars. We need to pull out. We can give some humanitarian aid to the countries that we have destroyed, and we need to mind our own business. We need to rebuild our country instead of focusing on destroying other countries. But that's precisely what they don't want you to do. They don't want you to focus on the destruction that these people and the Democrats have inflicted on America. They want you to focus on the fearful Auslander, as Hitler would call them, the foreigners who are a threat to you. They want to tell you. We need Thank to reform you, the Department of Defense. Thank we you. need as well to invest Thank in you, our military Marino. We're going to turn technology. To We're going to turn to domestic issues and now with Dana Bash. And we need to care for our veterans, so 307,000 of Bash. them aren't She's not going to shut up. waiting for health care. Thank you. Dana Bash. Governor Bush, let's talk about an issue that's wow. very important to Republican voters, and that's the Supreme Court. Uh, after Chief Justice John Roberts voted to uphold Obamacare twice, Senator Cruz criticized your brother for appointing John Roberts to the Supreme Court. Looking back on it, did your brother make a, mis a mistake? Well, I'm surprised Senator Cruz would say that since he was a strong supporter of John Roberts at the time. I, I, I will talk about what I will do as President of the United States as it relates to a Maybe we should talk about Justice. why John Roberts sure wrote both the assenting and dissenting opinions on Obamacare. Was he blackmailed? We all talked about that. We said, did they have dirt on him? Then we found out they were deliberately targeting him, and I think it was uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg who uh, were directly being targeted. We also found out after we were all speculating about that that uh, we had massive NSA surveillance was confirmed to everyone, and we knew that was happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's one of the key things we have to worry about about a Stasi surveillance state that all these people except for Rand Paul support. And I'm saying all of them. Donald Trump 
says that Ed Snowden is a total traitor, and he said, you know what we do with traitor? Implying that he needs to be in prison, needs to be executed. So every one of these guys, except for uh, Rand Paul, want to make a bigger mess of uh, the Fourth Amendment the Constitution, mm -hmm. a bigger shred of, of uh, paper out of and it. It's in, when we talk about Snowden, or we talk about Manning, or any of these other guys, Assange, it's always kill the messenger. It's yes. never let's yes. go after the people who are actually doing these horrendous things. It's like, oh, let's go tell them the guy who actually brought this to light. That is a sign of the last stages of corruption, Jakari. Mm -hmm. When they go after, when the corruption is exposed, the person who exposes it is the one who goes to jail or gets attacked, and nothing happens to the criminals who are exposed. Let me focus on two moments yes. of time. Number one, in 1990, go back to the debate. one room was David Souter, and another room Ted was Cruz. David Jones, the rock rib conservative on the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. George Herbert Walker Bush appointed David Souter. And then in 2005, in one room was John Roberts, and in another room was my <coughs> former boss, Mike Ludig, the rock rib conservative on the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. Thank you, sir. George W. Bush appointed John Roberts. And let me give you the consequences of that. If instead the President Bushes had appointed Edith Jones and Mike Ludig, which is who I would have appointed, <sighs> Obamacare would have been struck down three years ago, and the marriage laws of all 50 states would be on the books. These matter, and I've fought to defend the Constitution my whole life, and Governor I will Bush. as President. Let me say something well, about the Supreme well, Court justices, because President. a lot of people base their presidential decision on who they think is going to make the best Supreme Court appointments, and of course, that's what Ted Cruz was just talking about. That's been a long line of support for the Republican Party. We need to understand that we have divided power in the United States. We need presidents who will stand up to the Supreme Court. They neither amend the Constitution nor create law. But we have allowed them to do that because we've got a Congress that has abdicated its position, and we have presidents who have allowed them to do that and get away with it. One point in time, we had a president, Andrew Jackson, who said, the Supreme Court has made its ruling, let's see them enforce it. He understood that we had a divided government. We did that for a reason. We divided, but we're so concerned about a concentration of power that we divided it at the center into three parts, and we divided it from the center, a, a center, a power center of the people, the House of Representatives, a power center of the states, the Senate, as well as having the the individual states have power and sovereignty where the federal government was prohibited. We need to get over this idea that the Supreme Court has the final say on everything. We need a president who will stand up to them and will say something about that. We need to have an understanding of what our government is about and get back to its constitutional roots. And this whole thing about appointing Supreme Court justices, look, these guys can be corrupted. They're political appointees. They are unanswerable to the people. We don't need to be giving them that much power. And we were never going to be served well when we do, when we abdicate our own power. Every single Supreme Court justice will faithfully follow the law and will not act like philosopher kings. And you have no power over them. Once he appoints these Supreme Court justices, he can't enforce that. Once he makes an appointment, that guy can do a complete 180. And he knows that he's appointed for life. That is a fundamental <coughs> flaw in the system, but it is not necessarily a design flaw in the Constitution. It is what we have come to accept. As I mentioned at the beginning of the program, in 1917, with the enactment of the espionage law, the Supreme Court held for decades until the 1950s that movies were not protected by First Amendment. That is false, and they reversed themselves on it. We have the Supreme Court reverse itself on slavery. They've been wrong on a number of occasions, and we need to understand it's just the opinion that they have. And, and when they go in and they act as legislators instead of interpreting, even bothering to pretend that they're interpreting law, we need to shut that down. It needs to be done by a strong president, not some of these guys here. In the 14th Amendment, do you believe that a person, before they're deprived of life and liberty, should in fact have due process and equal protection under the law? Because if you do, you're going to do more than defund Planned you, Parenthood. Governor. One final thing, I'd make darn sure that we absolutely believe the Tenth Amendment. Every governor on this stage would share this much with you. Every one of us. Our biggest fight wasn't always with the legislature or even with the Democrats. My gosh, half the time it was with the federal government who apparently never understood Thank that you. if it's not reserved in the Constitution, right. then the Tenth Amendment says it's left to the states, but somebody forgot Thank to send a memo to Washington. Thank He's you, absolutely Governor. right about that. A quick break. Coming up, Again, you're listening to our you coverage of the GOP debate. This is the InfoWars Money Bomb 2015, 28 live hours. And we're not even, I guess, halfway through this yet. <laughs> um, we're going to be here until uh, after the debate finishes. Uh, we have a special that's going to run through 10 o'clock, 30% off of Super Male Vitality.
We also have free shipping for all the products at InfoWars.com. If you can help us reach 400 million people with a $1 million 